in this video, I'm going to share with you how I got my art made into puzzles and then what I learned from it. So here is one of the puzzles that I got. It is a 240 piece puzzle. It is 10 by 12 inches. It came with all the puzzle pieces in a plastic bag and from at least what my customers have said, all the puzzle pieces were always there. I've never got one complaint. Uh, whenever I order these and I got them from Puzzles Unlimited. I've posted a link in the description area below. I'm not an affiliate of Puzzles Unlimited or anything like that, so I'm not getting anything from making this video. I just want to share my experience with you. Now, one of the things that I learned, because um, I was trying to get puzzles made of my work back in 2017. Now, it, I think it's a little bit different now. There are some other places aside from wholesale suppliers uh, that you can get your puzzles made. I think like places like Redbubble or Print On Demand. Now I'm gonna kinda talk about the positives and negatives of each of these here in a second, but I didn't have the Print On Demand available at the time, so I couldn't do that. I looked at all the Print On Demand companies and they did not make puzzles at the time. So I had to buy my puzzles in bulk. I had to purchase 224 of these puzzles, but they allowed me to get four different designs. So I had two cat designs, and then I had a Labrador design, as well as a pug design, so two dogs and two cats and which it turned out to be 56 of each design this size the 10 by 12 ended up costing me six dollars and 99 cents a piece and when they are originally sent they actually the box closes here and then um, it came with a cellophane wrapper around it so that you could tell it was new I've obviously taken the wrapper off I've put together this whole puzzle myself to know what it was like and oh, the puzzle pieces were quite small these two are stuck together <laughs> One thing about this size of puzzle is the puzzle pieces are the same size as like a standard 1000 piece puzzle. So it's the same difficulty as that, but it's about a quarter of the size. So it only takes a person maybe six hours to put this together and they don't need like a huge table to put it together on. They can maybe put it together on an end table or like half of their kitchen table. They also make larger puzzles. This is a sample I got. It's a 504 piece puzzle. And I believe that it is, yeah, it's 16 by 20 inches in size. And again, the puzzle pieces are roughly the same. They might be a little bit bigger than the other ones, but not much. <laughs> They're very small. Although I ordered the 16 by 20 inch puzzle as a sample, I did not end up actually ordering those to resell because they were a little bit too expensive. They were $9.99 each, and I kind of just thought, you know, if I had to double the price on them to sell them, and so if I was selling them for $20, I didn't think people would pay $20 for a puzzle. <laughs> so I, I just, you know, I, I thought it would be just too much. So I went with the smaller size, so that when, when I doubled it, it'd be, I could sell them for $15 or $14.99 a piece. I thought that would be a little bit better, because $5 really does make a difference sometimes for people, especially when they're considering getting them as gifts. Also, it was a little bit less investment to make it save me around $750 total when it came to, you know, buying the large amount of them. So I just thought, you know, I don't know if these are even going to sell. So I wanted to save the money and go with the smaller size. Nowadays, though, you don't have to invest all that money in the puzzles. You can have them produced somewhere like Redbubble and then earn a percentage. But Redbubble is charging anywhere from $35 to $45 for the puzzles on their website. You can set your commission, your percentage that you earn to be however much you want. But the more that you tack on there, the higher the price is going to be. And, and like I said before, you know, I didn't think people would pay $20 for a puzzle. So I think you know, it's a big ask to get somebody to pay $40 for a puzzle. And I don't know what the quality level is of Redbubble, so I can't speak to that because I've never ordered any of their puzzles print on demand in so that I could see. But the quality of these puzzles is really good. The pieces are sturdy. When I heard back from customers after putting them together, they really seemed to like them. The only thing that they ever said was that they were really difficult because the pieces were small. And it's not all the puzzle company's fault by having the small pieces because I actually selected the number of pieces that I would have by size so I could have selected a fewer number of pieces for the size and then it would have been easier for people to put together and hang on to and that kind of thing and so in the future if I were to order puzzles again that's one of the things I would do is get a little bit bigger puzzle piece size one is that don't listen to customers when they request things, okay? Because what even brought about my idea of putting my art on puzzles was that I was at art fairs and I had lots of customers like asking me, hey, do you have your art on puzzles? Or what about mugs? Or what about t-shirts and all this stuff? And so then I was like, okay, well, that's what they want. So that's what I'll do. But what I couldn't 
expect or predict or envision was that you know they want the image that they're looking at on the puzzle so for example i chose four styles i have like 200 different animals that i've painted and that i often stock in my art fair booth as prints well i can't have 200 puzzles in stock i mean that would be an exorbitant amount of investment capital i'd have to have a warehouse to store them i'd have to have like a huge truck to bring them to the art fair and for me it's just totally unmanageable. And so I could have four puzzles, but what I would get constantly time and time again is, oh, I love the puzzle idea, but too bad you don't have the wolf on the puzzle or, or the elephant. If it was, I'd buy it. And the thing is, is that you want to make customers happy and you want to have what they want in stock. Otherwise they feel like, oh, I, I didn't get what I wanted and they feel a little let down and then they leave and they don't buy. It's, it's kind of crazy the way that is because like I would have prints available of the other image or whatever, but it just what, you know, it would leave, it would leave them wanting something and wishing there was what they really Really wanted there and, and and all that psychologically messes with buyer behavior and whether or not they'll actually purchase something from you and so what I learned is that if I couldn't stock all of my designs in it I shouldn't carry it as a product <laughs> now some artists might have a different perspective on that but for me and my market and kind of my niche that's what I need and so I had a hard time selling the puzzles I I took them from art fair to art fair I had them in my gallery at the mall it took me three years to sell them and <laughs> eventually I had to start selling them for like ten dollars a piece just so that I could sell them and get my money back out of them. The cat puzzles went the quickest and I was able to sell them for my full $15 that I wanted to get, but the dog puzzles were just slow going. And one of the things that I didn't know then, but I know now is that when it comes to cat artwork, cat people love all different types of cat art. And so they're not really discriminating against what kind of cat it is. If it's a cute cat, they like it because they like cats. And house cats oftentimes all look kind of similar in the way that their body is shaped and stuff. So when you have like a rainbow cat, it could really be anybody's cat. But when it comes to dogs, they want their dog's breed. They don't want some other dog breed. They don't just like dogs. I mean, some people do, but most people want their dog breed. So if they own a chihuahua, a long haired one, they want a long haired chihuahua, <laughs> right? Or, or whatever, you know, if they own a Labrador, they want a Labrador. And so even though I picked two popular breeds, uh, like the Labrador and the Pug to have on the puzzle, a lot of people didn't have those dogs. And so I had to wait until I found a customer who had that type of dog who also wanted a puzzle. So it was hard for me to get those things to align. Well, and also who was willing to pay $15 for a puzzle because that was the other thing. Is a lot of people are used to buying puzzles at Walmart and at Walmart you can get a puzzle for five bucks <laughs> or seven bucks, you know, really cheap. And they're big thousand piece puzzles. They're not these little quarter size puzzles with small pieces for three times as much money and so it's a hard sell you can try to convince the people and i had sales you know bullet points that i could kind of go through that were positives like well it's quicker to put together than a thousand piece puzzle and you can frame it without mod podging it you can just put it right in an 11 by 14 frame hang it up on the wall and so it becomes a piece of art and you're supporting a local artist you know that kind of thing so i had sales points that i could use to market them that would allow me to make my puzzles seem more attractive than the cheaper bigger puzzles at walmart but still that's in the person's back of their mind when they're thinking about buying a puzzle. And also what I realized is that some people are really into puzzles and they're really picky about what size and what style and how big the pieces are and how many pieces there are. Like some people, they won't even purchase a puzzle unless there's a thousand pieces, even if it still is a small puzzle piece size, they just don't want it. They only collect thousand piece puzzles. And I had no idea that there were puzzle collectors that were like that serious about it, but they are. And so it's just something to realize if you're gonna go into the puzzle game, you become a puzzle maker as well as an artist, you know, so you have to kind of learn the puzzle business. So all in all, I mean, I've sold all the puzzles that I purchased and I won't be buying anymore because it was so difficult to sell them. I mean, anytime that you invest $1,500 and then it takes you like three years to double your money on that $1,500. I mean, maybe that seems good, but it's not really when you're having to store them and you're having to take them in and out of every single art fair booth. You're constantly trying to sell them. And then, you know, like I said, my customers sometimes would be disappointed because I didn't have their style in the puzzle and they had their heart set on a puzzle. And so then they wouldn't buy the print. 
but I found that, you know, like if I didn't have the puzzles there, they'd buy a print because the puzzle never even entered their mind. And so it's, it, it's all buyer psychology. So, so maybe actually all in all, the puzzles could have lost me sales and lost me money rather than gaining me money. And that's where I've learned just not to listen to what customers ask for, really. I know that seems bad because, you know, you should listen to your customers, you should care about your customers, but at a certain level, your customers don't really understand business and they don't understand your business as well as you do. And so just because they're asking for a lot of things doesn't mean that you should do it from a profitability aspect of your business. That said, now that there's print on demand, if people are asking for puzzles and mugs and that kind of thing, you can have a print on demand section on your website. So like if you're selling in person, you can say, well, I don't have those here, but give them a card, go to my website and you can order them. And yeah, they're going to be like $40 a puzzle, <laughs> but you're not investing any money. And if you sell one, then you make a profit. If I do puzzles in the future, I will definitely go the print on demand route. I won't invest in them wholesale. Well, I would love to hear your thoughts. And if you have any questions about putting your art on puzzles, I just ask them below. I'm happy to help as much as I can. All right. See you next time.